hello and welcome everyone so here is another set of set up of activities which will help us to study the factors affecting friction students there are two factors which will affect friction let us study the first factor that is nature of the surfaces in contact with each other i have used over here three different types of surfaces this is a this is old towel piece old piece of towel this is aluminium foil this is the sandpaper so let us uh, study over here i have used these jenga blocks which are of near about equal size and equal weight i will lift this up and we will see whether the which one of the jenga blocks will fall first right so let's see over here let's observe and learn the first factor affecting friction so here goes the first one from the aluminium foil and then the second one on the sandpaper and we can see that still it is not going down now it has gone down so the first factor affecting friction is nature of the surface of the two object if the surface is quite rough like in this towel the irregularities are more so that means the friction will be more which will oppose the motion here the surface is very smooth so that means irregularities are very less so that means interlocking is less so the friction is very less here the sandpaper the irregularities are more as compared to the aluminium foil but it is less as compared to the towel so here the jenga block was uh, falling just after this aluminium foil and before the towel so this was the first factor affecting friction that is nature of the surfaces in contact with each other so this is a second setup which will help us to understand the second factor affecting friction as we have understood that the first factor affecting friction is the nature of the surfaces which are in contact with each other now we will understand the second factor which is actually the pressing force between the two objects right in the previous video we have understood that there is interlocking which is present between the irregularities of the two surfaces so we need to understand that the tighter these interlocking between the two irregularities will be the more friction it will be if this uh, interlocking is not tight if it is loose that means in that case the friction will be less so to understand it there is a small demo if i take these two sheets and if i want to interlock these two sheets with the help of let's say this here pen i am interlocking these two sheets then we will see how much force it is required to move so i am moving these two sheets and see uh, with a little amount of effort i can move these two sheets over each other but let us now take this another pin and now i will be putting this holding this and pressing these two sheets together with the help of this now let us see i am applying so much of the force c and still these two sheets they are not moving so this is a simple demo that the tighter the interlocking will be that means the more the pressing force holding these interlockings together the more will be the friction and the less the pressing force the less will be the friction so it depends upon how tightly how a uh, much pressed these interlockings are over each other so the pressing force between the two objects will be the second factor affecting friction with the help of this setup of the activity we will understand more clearly that the second factor of friction is the pressing force between the two objects more generally in general words we can say that it is the weight of the object which will change the friction so with the help of this activity i will explain you how friction will change if you change the weight of the object which will actually change the pressing force between the two objects so for this this i am using a wooden block which is smooth which is polished then a pan these marbles i am using you can use stones also and a small light box i have used over here butter paper to make the surface smooth otherwise we can use the glass over here instead of the butter paper let's start with the activity 
I have made made this arrangement. I have put one pasted one jenga block over here just to avoid so that this wooden block should not fall down. So now I will be putting one by one the marbles into it and let's see how many marbles are required to make this wooden block move. One. Let us count. Two. It is still over there. Three. The wooden block is not still moving. And now it is four. And five. And six. And seven. So that means how many marbles are required? Total seven marbles are required to move this wooden block. Now to study whether the force of friction depends upon pressing force that means the weight of the object or not let's repeat this activity by increasing the weight of the wooden block I am putting this box over here so that the weight of this box will increase and hence the pressing force between the two surfaces it will increase let's take the marble again I am putting two first because we know already seven are were required in moving that so two and then four, five, six, seven. So earlier we noticed that it moved on seven but now it is not moving because the weight of the box is now more than that. Eight, it is not moving yet and nine. And then 10 it is not moving C so that means now it required 11 marbles over here which showed that the second factor is the pressing force between them that is the weight of the object more weight means more friction less weight means less friction